Hi everybody, happy Monday. We're Eat Buckler and I'm Chris. Hi, I'm Steve. And we are glad you're here. Thank you so much. We almost made it to 400 uh, subscribers last what, last week, so we're like 399, so get yeah. us to 450. We'll get there. <laughs> we'll get there. Um, we are going to tell you, this. so we broke this video into two videos because we just finished a road trip in Europe and we had lots of questions from you guys. A lot of you want to know where we went and a lot of you want to know how much it cost. So this video is going to be all about where we went and the next video is going to be how we how we leased a car, parked the car, and drove the car and all the cost of the car in the next video. So uh, hang in, watch, uh, that'll be in two weeks. So we got a two part video. This week is all about, I don't know, the top 10 or the top things we did on our yeah, road trip yeah. from uh, Rome to Lisbon. I feel like we've already talked about some of the places that we've gone to and some of our, you know, top 10 in Spain and top 10 in, in uh, we haven't in, done that one yet. Well, <laughs> we haven't done that one yet. But so, but you know, some of the things that we did that because we had a car, we were able to go to some of those out of way, out of the way places, and some of the things that you just really isn't easy to get to by by train or by bus. And uh, having that car gave us that flexibility to do those things and really get into the, the places that uh, that we wanted to see in the way that we wanted to to, uh, to see them. Yes, being on our five year international house hunt the unofficial name of our tour. Uh, having a car to see the coast of Spain and the coast of Portugal in particular was, was really important. So um, let's start with, we picked up the, a car in, well, uh, we picked up a car in Rome, but first we, we took a cruise from Mexico to Barcelona, then did a house sit in Naples, and then did a week in Sicily, which we did by plane, train, automobile. And then we, drove in, or we flew into Rome and picked up a car in Rome. And the first thing we did is we drove to Tuscany. Yeah, so uh, so we went to Florence again. We talked about this a little bit. I uh, had to spend some time with uh, with some family and uh, had a great time in Florence. And it's a beautiful city. Um, but what's it, probably the you don't need a car to be in Tuscany and in, in Florence, but you do need a car to enjoy right, Tuscany. Right. And that was one of the reasons why we wanted to have a car because there's so many little tiny towns all over the Tuscan region that we wanted to make sure we could see them. And the one town that we found particularly exciting and so glad that we had a car for, as the Lisbon Plains go over, uh, was Volterra. So Volterra was a, a tiny little town. You, you, you squiggle and wiggle and wiggle to get there. And it is known for being the, um, the place in, in Italy to get alabaster. What, yeah. what did we do when we were there? Yeah, so, you know, so we went and watched them, you know, craft craftsmen create some uh, some alabaster little little pieces figurines, figurines yeah. and uh, so it was it, it was just so old school it was just so cool to see these old craftsmen spinning their ala their reels or whatever and right. uh, making right. alabaster things so uh, we couldn't have done that if we hadn't had a car so that was really cool then from tuscany we drove into venice parked right outside of venice you can't don't drive in venice <laughs> park outside of venice and then we took the the water taxi over into venice and um we, probably there were two things that we absolutely recommend that you do in Venice. And the first was probably one of Steve's favorite things that we ever did. Yeah, we, we did a, a walking tour, which we do a lot. And we particularly went through the Jewish quarter uh, to the original uh, Jewish ghetto, which is really fantastic to uh, to see that it's still alive and still have a rich culture there, but also to hear about the history and understand uh, going back, you know, hundreds of years uh, in history of, of the Jewish culture. And banking with the with the Jewish culture and and synagogues and so on. So, really fascinating and really fantastic to find something about religion that wasn't Catholic. <laughs> so, and then the other thing that we really enjoyed. It is so touristy and it costs what eighty euro or something. But we absolutely adored our gondola ride. So it's touristy, it's hokey, but it's absolutely worth it. So there's, if you can do it, do it. There's nothing like Venice. If you haven't been there, you have to you have to go. Yeah. And if you've been there, you know you want to go back. Yeah. So then from Venice, we drove over to the coast, to Cinque de Terre, to La Spezia. And from La Spezia, we stayed there three or four days and um, took the trains into Cinque, uh, Cinque de Terre, where, which you probably know, it's five cities right along, or five little towns right along the cliffs of the Italian Riviera where you go hiking and we did I think you said it was the best hike you've ever done I think it was it's just so beautiful and, and uh, the people were so wonderful that you meet along the way uh, it's just you know beautiful hike and we had beautiful weather it's just gorgeous scenery and we've got more planes going on <laughs> overhead 
uh, well, I'm going to tell them to stop that. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> then um, from after a, a couple days of hiking, we Steve kind of just en- enjoys a little gambling now and then, and so he thought he'll be a high roller in Monaco. Monaco, baby. <laughs> so we drove into Monaco, and the only high rolling we did was watch the high rollers walk in <laughs> or drive in in the amazing Maseratis money and, and Rolls Royces. And I mean, you... Lots of money rolling in, but what was it? They were setting up for um... yeah, setting up for the uh, for the Grand Prix, so the annual Grand Prix in Monte Carlo. We got there about a week too early. They were busy, you know, setting up all the fences and all the barriers and such. And repaving the road. The ra- yeah, the race just goes right through the middle of, of, of the city and the right, Monaco right around the the, yeah. uh, the casino. So it's it's uh, it takes a lot of time and effort for them to set up to prepare for that race, the Formula One car. So that was that was really cool. Yeah. I was I mean I didn't know I was a Formula One fan and now I am. So and that was lots of cool. lots of racers in town and it was just there was a, a fun vibe there while we were, we were there. So then, Monaco, we headed down to Nice, and um, kind of in, in the race, the French racing spirit, we uh, Steve got to recreate one of his bucket list items, and and he got to. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so the in two thousand uh, in twenty twenty one, the first stage of the Tour de France was in Nice. Uh, yes, in Nice, and so we got to recreate the first stage of the Tour de France. And of course, we were using the city bikes, so it was it was just you know a lot of fun. We were not, you know, racing, but it was great to get on a cycle and uh, re-experience uh, what it may be like to be uh, a competitive racer. And you even wore your yellow jer- yellow jersey that day. I uh, was the winner, <laughs> number one, baby. So uh, because we had a car, we then got to again. This is all about Steve. We got to do one of his uh, favorite artists. We um, Dolly was born in the town of Figueres, and so or. Did you bore, bore or die in there? Both. Anyway, <laughs> um, and so we got to kind of get off the beaten track and go into Figueres and do Do- the Dolly Theater, which is Dolly had built it before he died to house some of his famous works. And the whole uh, experience is this interactive, engage, go through the theater and see all the cool things of Dolly. Yeah, and, and he's buried there, and uh, some of his most famous works are there, and he designed it all himself. And again, this is one of those places that is really not on the normal path that you would go through if you were to say, let's, you know, let's go to Spain and see some of the top uh, the top cities and the top sites. So having a car was really a, a big benefit for us. So then we uh, we overnighted in Sitges, and then, then rather than continuing down the coast of Spain, we zipped up to San Sebastián, which is about three or four hours north, or I guess west, probably northwest of uh, Sitges, where we stayed for a couple days in San Sebastián. Now, um, we do mention San Sebastián in our top 10 places to live in Spain, which I'll, I'll look up, pick up here. And so we enjoyed San Sebastián, and I think probably, we didn't mention this in that video, but one of the most really cool things is that we had pichos there which is the the basque iteration of tapas and spain takes or uh san sebastian just takes that to another art artistic level of what food should look like and what food should taste like so we had a really great time eating pichos in san sebastian yeah and we talked about this earlier about uh, it being a really a uh, foodie town and one of the things to know about it is that they have all these gastronomical societies and so so for hundreds of years uh, food has really been an art form in this particular t- particular town, and uh, they still they they study it and they compete uh, on a regular basis uh, of how to you know create incredible uh, cuisine uh, in 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 this city. And a lot of people on our walking tour were there to check out the society, so that was something we knew nothing about. Then we popped over to Babao. Uh, make sure you get reservations for the Guggenheim. We lost out because they were sold out, but you want to go to Babao to see the Guggenheim. And then we zipped over to Madrid, where we stayed for a couple days. And, um, you know, there's a lot of videos about things to do in Madrid. We will let you watch those videos. But the one thing we found really um, unexpected and really exceptional was the Casa de Campo, or Campo de Casa, I don't know which way it goes, yeah. uh, a giant park, probably bigger than, easily bigger than Central Park. Oh my god, think? yeah, huge, it was huge. Giant park right in the middle of Madrid, or maybe, I don't know if it's technically the middle of Madrid, but we took a cable car, Steve and his alternative transportation goals, 
I would take a cable car over the park and got amazing views in Madrid and it wasn't crowded and I think I don't think it's on the tourist the tourist route. Yeah, it's it really is. It's, it's it's the whole you know covers like the entire side of, of Madrid. It's just this beautiful, vast, uh, wooded, you know, yeah, just trails, just beautiful, uh, you know, park. I guess is is yeah. What do you and, say? And you don't you say, like wait a second. Where's Madrid? And it's like oh, it's right there. We're we're here. We're and you can still see the in castles Madrid. and everything from the from the park and from the cable car. So definitely, a, a really, a don't miss. So from Madrid, we uh, went back down to the Spanish coast and ended up for a week in an Airbnb in a town called Denia. Now, this was really the whole reason why we got a car is because we wanted to find some place along the coast and then spoke out and see all the little different Spanish towns to see if there's something that we really liked. And you see that in the top 10 video, but we saw much more than what was listed in the top 10. And while we were in Denia, we went to Javia, Alicante, Benidorm. Yes. <laughs> um, and um, I think that was about it. But we, we, it was really, a, because we had the car, we could zip in and out and not really have to worry. Matter of fact, a lot of those places don't even really have bus service. So and I learned that the first time I actually did this trip, I did it with my daughter. We started in Lisbon and we ended up in Barcelona. And we did it by car, or not by car, by bus and train and plane. And I'll give you a link down below for how to do the southern Spanish coast and, the, and Portugal without a car. So for all y'all that want to do it without a car, here's the, here is the link for how to do that. But if you have a car, it's a beautiful area <laughs> for hiking and beach, and again, popping into some in and out of some of these little towns that you just normally wouldn't uh, wouldn't be able to get to. Uh, you know, I suppose there's you know there's Uber and other forms of transportation, but having a car was really made it yeah. easy. Um, then from Dinya, which we loved, as we said in our video, we went we picked up a house sit in Alamartes. Now the reason why we could do this house sit. It was out in the country, and the only way we could have done it was with a car. So we went, we were out in the olive groves in this, we weren't even in Alamartes, we were in this little tiny town that had five houses, and not even a town, a, not even a village, <laughs> a spot on the road, and just absolutely adored living a week or 10 days at, and house sitting. Well, here's a link for how to do house sitting. And we just relaxed. And while we were there, we were able to spoke out from Alamartes into um, Malaga, Granada. Uh, yeah, my favorite was Montefrio. This is a, a, a little tiny mountaintop town that National Geographic says is the one, one of the most beautiful views in the world or in Europe or something. And you just, there's no way you get there by train. And then we went to Cordoba for the patio festival. And then we went to Ronda, which is famous. And Hemingway made that famous for their uh, bullfighting history. So just again, got the chance to kind of spoke out. So. I, I wouldn't recommend our house it as a place to, well, I guess you could if you wanted to house it, but you could certainly use Granada as your place to spoke out uh, there in southern Spain and go check out all the things. We even stayed in the castle while we were down there. Uh, we made it down to Gibraltar where we saw all the monkeys. We saw the monkeys grooming <laughs> each other. <laughs> the scary, scary monkeys. <laughs> it's like Wizard of Oz. Um, Okay, then from Gibraltar, we continued towards Portugal, and on the way to Portugal, we were going to Talvera, and Seville was on the way, and we stopped in Seville, and what happened when we got to Seville? Yeah, it was, it was a hot day, it was a beautiful day, it was hot and we were tired, but I got to get a haircut by the, the barber, barber of, of Seville. Seville. <laughs> so we uh, had, had some fun uh, getting a haircut by the barber of Seville. And then we had some some lunch and, and but I think, hopped around town. I think by the time we got to Seville, we had been go 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 for a month. Even though we've been ten days in a house sit, we still yeah. were go 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 go. By the time we got to Seville, we were so burned out. We couldn't see another castle, another centro, another <laughs> cathedral. We're just like, get your hair cut, let's have some lunch, and let's get out of here. So it we hot. need to go. It back was to a hot day. Yeah, it was hot, and yeah. we need to go back to Seville. Um, but it, it definitely, even though. We were, we were on a slower travel than most. We were not on slow travel at all. And right. so it, we definitely were beat by the time we got to Seville. Fortunately, from there, we ended up in Sevilla. We crossed the border into Portugal, ended up in Tavira for a week. And then again, we used Tavira as a place to spoke out to all the places in the Algarve. So we went to Albufiera, uh, Faro, Quartiera, Lagos, um, 
Oh, wow. Oh, how? Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> We're learning how to speak Portuguese not very well. And found that a, we kind of thought that everything in the Algarve would look alike. And, you know, all these little cute towns with white buildings would all look the same. And they are yeah, absolutely not. Yeah, really different. Yeah, um, different uh, Tavira, cultures. Tavira is it was a beautiful little town. It's a great place for us to hang out and spoke out from there. Um, you know, it's on a river, and you have to take the ferry to the beach. The beach is beautiful, but it's really different than uh, than some of the other places that. Uh, and that's where we saw that anchor, the anchor beach with all the different anchors. Anchor so beach. that was really cool. From the tuna fleet, there was a, a nudist beach there as well, and then from and. Yes. There'll be another video coming with the nudist beach. <laughs> no, no, there will not. <laughs> and then we went to um, Abu Fiera, which was really yeah, a real touristy, great for the kids, you know, lots of water parks, that type of thing. And then Quatiera was uh, really a working, working community. And then all the way out to Lagos. I really kind of was thinking by the time we got to Lagos, which is the very western tip of the Algarve, we're kind of like... We're not yeah, going to see anything. Yeah, I thought we'd seen it all, but no, it is gorgeous. It Drop is dead. the place to go to in the Algarve. I say, if you're if you're going to go, make sure you go to Lagos. Uh, fabulous views, cute town, really uh, just wonderful people. Really, really enjoyed. And they had a bagel shop there. We actually went into a bagel shop. We hadn't had a bagel in a year, so yeah. we went to the bagel store. So from Lagos, then we went up to uh, the beach just outside of Lisbon. Um, cut. Uh, Cara, Cara, well, we got to look at our nose. Caparica, Caparica. So we stayed on the beach for the night. It was the last night that we had the car. And uh, in the morning, we got up, went for a bike ride, cleaned out the car, and then took the car to the Lisbon airport and dropped it off at the Lisbon airport. And now we've been in Lisbon for a week. So we'll tell you more about that in another video because we are way long in the tooth on this video. <laughs> uh, but in the next video, we're going to tell you all the cost. So the whole, total cost for the trip, and then we're going to break that out for the car cost. How much the car cost, where we got it from, how easy or difficult that was, gas where we picked prices, it up, the gas parking, prices, the fee, the tolls. tolls, parking all over Europe, some of the road signs in Europe, whether you need an international license or not. We're going to answer all those questions in the next video, which is in two weeks on the car. Next week, we're going to be talking about our Nomad anniversary. We're going to be on the Camino, and then we'll be then we'll be doing a Camino video. So. Over the next month, we've got a Camino video, a Nomadversary video, a Portugal video, and a cost car. of the car video. So what else do you want to know? Yeah, Ask us some questions. Up. Post us below on questions on those topics so we make sure we answer them in the next videos. Sorry this got so long, but hopefully all the pictures along the way have kept you entertained. And what else do you want to say? Uh, how do you ciao. Ciao. <laughs> how you say goodbye in Portuguese? Uh, I don't know. I've just been saying bom dia. Bom dia. <laughs> ciao. Hello. Goodbye. Bye. <laughs>